Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Today it's poured painting. It's a move in that rainbow all around the canvas to create a finished piece of art to hang on the wall. Now, what exactly is poured painting? Well, if you've never done one before or don't know anything about them, this video is for you. It's got everything you need from start to finish to make that first painting. Now, when you're doing poured painting, you're gonna need an acrylic paint and you're gonna need something called a pouring medium. This is what you mix with the paint so that it, one, moves around the canvas beautifully, and two, it helps with drying because when you've got paint, this much paint involved, it won't dry evenly. You'll get cracking and crazing and that kind of stuff going on if you don't have the pouring medium in there. Now, there are lots of different pouring mediums. There are lots of different recipes, formulas, and that kind of stuff. The one that I'm gonna be using in this video is called Floetrol. You can get this at either a hardware store or you can get it online. And of course, it comes in lots of different sizes. I like to buy the gallon just because it's most economical. You get the best price for the biggest one. And you're gonna see how I'm not working with this big jug when I'm actually mixing stuff up. So you'll see that shortcut too. So enjoy this video of how the process works. And then at the end, you can head on over to the blog at acolorfuljourney.com I'll have a link down below for you too, where I've got all of the supplies used, if there's any recipe involved, that kind of stuff. It's all written for you there as a reference. So you don't have to worry about that part while you're just watching and getting a feel for how paint pouring works. And what we're gonna be doing today is called a dirty pour. And it's one of my favorite things to do because of the wonderful color surprises in it. So enough talking about this, let's get in and start mixing that paint. I've got everything here I need to mix up the paint. I have got my pouring medium in this glass jar. Now it comes in big gallon things, or that's what I get it from a hardware store, so it makes it more manageable if I put it in something like one of these canning jars when I'm pouring into cups, like these bathroom Dixie cup kinds of things. Now exactly how much pouring medium am I putting in there? Well, I'm eyeballing it. I'm putting about that much in there which isn't very helpful to you, is it? You probably want to know exactly how much pouring medium and how much paint to put together. Well, when I dove into paint pouring, I did a lot of actual careful experimenting to figure out exactly what is the proper formula, exactly how much. Yes, I even measured stuff. What I found is if I had about three quarters of a cup of pouring medium all the way up to a cup and a quarter, so that's a half cup variance in there. That's a pretty wide swing when you're talking about this. If I had about two ounces of that deco premium paint in there, they all look the same to me. It wasn't, it didn't have to be that precise. What I found through my experiments, what mattered more to me, which was a better indicator than actually measuring stuff out, was what it looked like when I mixed it here with the popsicle stick. If the color in the cup with the pouring medium matched the color that was in the tube, then I was usually very, very happy with what I had. And I was overjoyed that I didn't have to do that measuring, that worrying, that kind of thing. Now, as you're mixing, you do have one thing you have to keep in mind, and that is air bubbles. They are the enemy of paint pouring. So as I'm mixing this up, I'm trying not to fold in a bunch of air. Basically, don't whisk this and turn it all frothy like a cappuccino. You wanna have as few air bubbles as possible in your paint, because when you pour it on the canvas, yep, you're gonna pour those air bubbles too. Now, do you have to have a million colors to do this? No, you absolutely don't. You can get some magical, wonderful results with just a few colors. Here I've chosen a red, a yellow, and a blue. Yep, that hot pink is my red and that cobalt is my blue. And I'm just gonna use those along with white. Those are the only colors that I'm gonna use on this canvas. I am gonna use a lot of white, so I'm not gonna mix that up in a little cup. That's actually mixed up in one of the big ball jars. I've already pre-mixed it, and I tend to keep the colors I use all the time in these big jars so that they're pre-mixed, ready to go. So our paint's mixed up and ready to use, and now let's talk about where we're gonna do the actual pouring on the canvas. Now, when I do the pouring, paint drips. Stuff runs over the sides, the edges, and I don't wanna waste a thing. So that's why I have a place to catch all that wonderful color, like what you see down there from a pour earlier today. I've lined the box with an inexpensive Teflon mat that I cut to size. That way, when this paint is all dry, it just peels right up and I get the most beautiful, gorgeous paint skins. Again, not a drop of color and paint gets wasted when pouring. Now that very fancy metal grate that I've got on there helps hold the canvas and that way I can use different sizes of things and lets the paint drip through. And what exactly is that? That's a cooling rack from the kitchen section. 
And I haven't talked much about the box that this rack is resting on because, well, it's just a plain old cardboard box that I cut the flaps off of. There's nothing special about it other than it's a cardboard box that is smaller than my cooling rack because that way then it can rest on top of the box and create a way for that paint to drip on through. Well, I didn't start with the cardboard box. Yep, I had to move up to the cardboard box. What I started with was a disposable roasting pan from the grocery store. I just needed one that was bigger than my canvas, so this became my drip pan. And I used four little bathroom drinking cups as my supports, and then my canvas could sit on top of it. And the reason why I don't still use these is because I wanted to be able to easily capture the paint that was down there, and that's why I moved up to the cardboard box. Before you pour, you want to make sure that your canvas is nice and level. So to do that, yep, I actually use a level and I make sure that that bubble is in between the two lines and I will test it in different places on the canvas. Now, if you've got the engineering gene and you are an exceptionally precise person, then you can definitely work this until it is absolutely mathematically level. I do it until it's as level as I can get it. Now what I found is on that side is the bubble wasn't really in the center of those lines. So that tells me that I need to raise or lower parts of this. So then I just grab whatever I've got around and try and shim it up or raise it up a little bit until I get it in the center. There I'm just using one of the popsicle sticks that I've got and that will raise it up just a little bit to get it closer to being in the center. And once I think I've got that side where I want it to be, yep, you know it, I'm gonna go and check the other sides again. So I've got it as level as what I can get it, and now it's time to mix my paints together to make a dirty pour. Yep, I'm using an old cup. I'll reuse my supplies over and over again because, well, why waste anything? I'm also going to want some more white paint. This time it's in a squirt bottle, which makes it easier to put in the cup in smaller amounts, and there's also a little bit of silicone right there in the bottle. By adding 14 drops of silicone into that bottle, that's going to help make the cells happen when I'm doing the pour. Now that you know this setup, all the supplies, it's time to put them together into the cup to make our dirty pour. So I'm gonna put one color in and then the next color or white, whatever I wanna put on there, and I'm gonna fill the cup layer after layer. The important thing here is to have lots of layers. The more layers that you have, the more interesting that the pour becomes. I'm using three colors in white. Could you use a different color for every single layer? Absolutely. Could you do this in all monochrome and do like all blues or all reds and that kind of thing? Absolutely. The important thing here is just to have a lot of layers in whatever colors that bring you joy. You might be wondering if there's a certain kind or type of paint that you need to do when you're doing this. And I have used everything from craft paints all the way up to artist grade paints. And as long as it's something that you can mix in with your pouring medium, you can use any kind of acrylic paint that you have. And which paint do I think is the best one to use? Whichever one you've got within arm's reach in a color that you love. And this is the point where the excitement begins to really build for me. My cup is almost full. That means it's almost time for me to pour this out on the canvas and see what it's gonna do. Even though I'm using the same colors that I might have used on another pour, every time I do this, every one of them is unique. And I never know until it gets poured out exactly what's gonna happen. So again, just a reminder, here are the three colors that we've got in this cup. Those are the only colors plus white that I've got. But we're going to see a lot more color than that when I pour this out. I'm going to get the canvas ready by putting a layer of white paint and pouring medium on here. Now, why do I use white to do this? Well, the main reason is it's my least expensive paint. I buy a big thing of this Americana white paint, and I find that that's less expensive than the colors. So for this base under layer, I will often put it as just that white, simply because it's my least expensive paint. I like the look of when the paint drips over the side. So I want the color to go down the sides of my canvas. So I'm gonna kind of get it primed and ready to go by making sure I've got some of this white paint all along the sides too. That'll help the paint flow over there a little bit more easily and I'll be sure to get great coverage on the sides that way. To get the paint on the canvas, I'm gonna use what I call the San Francisco technique. Now I call it that because it reminds me of Lombard Street, that really winding road that's very iconic in San Francisco. That's really the look that I'm going for here, just going back and forth, pouring that paint on there. So how much of the paint in the cup should you use? 
Well, in this, there are no shoulds. It's simply play and fun and color. Use as much as you want to use, use as little as you want to use. Now I am half tempted just to leave it the way it is because I'm really loving how those colors look that way, but I also really love the look when it runs over the side. So I'm gonna bring some gravity in to help me and I'm just gonna tip the canvas around and let it pull the paint. This is the whole reason why I have fallen in love with paint pouring, because just watching those colors move around, seeing what starts to change and shift, the fact that it's not predictable, there's always a surprise with it. This is why I am absolutely smitten with playing with the rainbow and paint pouring. Now I've got drips coming off the side there and they're all getting captured in the box, so nothing's lost. The drips that make it down to the bottom, those will become part of the skin that's down there. But there's another use for some of those drips. By wiping my fingers along the bottom, I'm picking up some of that paint and I'm pushing it up on any area on the side where I don't have full coverage. So basically I'm taking it from the bottom and moving it up to the sides and the corners. For me, those corners, they're quite pesky and they frequently do not have enough paint on them. So I will use what's on the bottom to help cover up those corners. Once I'm happy with where it's at, then I'm gonna let it drip dry a little bit. I'm gonna leave it on here anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes just to let those drips catch in the bottom of the box. But I am gonna remove it from the cooling rack here, this grate that I've got, because well, the School of Hard Knocks taught me that if I leave it on here to dry, it pretty much fuses to that rack so that it's very difficult to get off. So I do not wanna let it completely dry here on this. So I needed a place to put this to dry. I ended up creating drying racks where I can set the canvases once they're done dripping over to dry. Now to build these, I used the supplies that I had on hand because you know what? The best supplies to use are the ones that you have access to. And so I've got cardboard, some Dixie cups that were hot glued on there, and that's where I can set this to dry. The most important thing about the placement of the cups is that you want it so that when you put the canvas on there, the, the cups are resting on the wooden frame around it. Then you just need to wait for it to dry, which could be anywhere from 12 to 48 hours, depending on how much paint you've got on there and the temperature and that kind of thing. You do wanna keep it in a normal, stable temperature area, so indoors, and you do not wanna do things like fans or that kind of stuff. This is a slow drying thing and it does dry better when you just let it dry naturally. So after the painting was completely dry, what did it look like? Well, here it is. This is it completely dry. All those wonderful layers of color in there and those little circles, you might be wondering, hey, wait, you didn't see those in the video. Where'd they come from? Those are cells that developed thanks to the silicone that was in the white and they showed up in the drying process. That's one of the cool things about paint pouring is you just never know exactly what it's gonna be until it's completely dry. Now, hey, wait a minute, what about the paint that was left over in the cup, the paint that I didn't use all up? Well, that paint didn't get wasted. I used that to make another painting. Yep, it started the next one, and you bet I've got a video for you of that. Now, if you wanna be sure to see that once I get it uploaded, make sure you've hit the subscribe button, that way you'll get a notification as soon as it's there. Thanks so much for joining me for today's play and thank you for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.